Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Carpet Labs. Today we're going to be talking about uh, a bit of an unusual behaviour that we see in carbohydrates or monosaccharides called alpha and beta isomers. Okay, so so far we, we've looked at this idea of how glucose is put together. Okay, so I've drawn this a few times. Hopefully you're getting a bit more familiar with how it, it put, is put together. So this is our structure of glucose. All right, and so what I want you to do here is I want you to pay attention to two parts. Now, this bit and this bit, these two groups that I've labeled in red. Because what happens is that, um, what we see is that we know that this structure at this point here can reopen them. The covalent bonds can undo so that we end up with an open chain version. Okay, and so um, what we see with that open chain version, um, I'll draw it for you now. Okay, so remember that, that um, this oxygen in the ring here comes from this OH group that's over on the side, that then it attacks over here at this carbon, and then that affects, um, you know, that this becomes this, this OH group that's over here. But what I want you to imagine is just, you know, a hypothetical kind of scenario that we had, had this molecule, but instead it looked a bit like this. Okay, so what we have here... You can see that the only difference in these structures is the way that this last group is pointing. Okay, but so this, this bond over here, where that carbon is connected, can rotate like any single bond can. Okay, but the reality of what we see here, and this is just kind of an introduction to a, um, a bigger area that we, won't, we don't touch on in our syllabus, is that the 3D structure of this molecule, where the bonds are facing in 3D space, there are variations at each bond as to how that can be, depending on whether the OH group is on this side or this side at each point. That's why we end up with differences in our ring and different sugars that result. But what we see is that, okay, recognizing that all these bits are all in the same space and same place, but that when this group is oriented in the opposite way, what we get when it closes, the ring closes up, um, is that we get a, a different version of this final glucose molecule. I'm going to draw it over here. Okay, so what we have over here is this is our different version of this glucose molecule. Okay, so notice the bits that I have in red. And you see the difference in their position relative to one another in the versions that we have. What we recognize is that, <clears throat> chemically speaking, that these two substances are almost identical. They are the same substance. They are glucose. But that there is a key difference there that then has a, a little flow-on effect. And these molecules are not exactly identical for in their properties and for all intents and purposes they behave in identical ways, but there's a subtle difference in the position of this OH group. And so what we do is that we say, all right, we recognize that this is glucose and so is that. But in order to actually represent the difference here that we give them a little symbol out the front. This one is known as alpha glucose and this one is known as beta glucose. Okay, so the first two letters of the Greek alphabet to distinguish between these two versions. They are isomers of one another. We talked about isomers back with haloalkanes, seeing the same molecular formula but different structure. Okay, now here they have almost exactly the same structure, but just that one little difference, which then means that they are not exactly the same substance. Okay, and so what we have, we call this one alpha and beta, based on how these two groups are relative to one another. Because when we make these models, as you will have done by this point or you, you will do soon, is that this group kind of sticks up. You know, like if we're kind of thinking about this is the, the kind of the plane of the ring, that then this group actually kind of sticks up out of the ring. Okay, it looks like I'm trying to make kind of like puppets or something inappropriate. Okay, but so, so it actually it kind of, it sticks up like that. And then the OH group then is actually kind of sticking down like that. Okay, so you've kind of got something pointing up and something pointing down when you make a model like this. So that what we say is alpha 
has the groups groups on opposite sides, opposite faces, I might say, of the ring. Okay, so that's kind of one is pointing up above the ring and the other one's pointing down. Whereas then beta, we see that they're both pointing up, that these two groups are on the same face of the ring. Okay, that if you made it this way, that they're both pointing up. If it was facing down the other way, they'd both be pointing down. Now, the reason that we care is that when we're thinking about how the glucose molecules connect to make bigger molecules, polysaccharides like starch and cellulose, is that depending on which version we're actually joining, that will have dis distinctively different effects on the structure of that polysaccharide. What does it look like in its big picture form? Okay, and so what we see is that then the alpha glucose is what's used to make starch, um, which is amylose and amylopectin, and is also used in animals to make in glycogen, whereas beta glucose over here is used in cellulose. Okay, and so what that does, and we'll look at this a little bit further, is that then the way that this is put together and how they connect together means that starch and cellulose, for example, which are both plant-based sugars, have very different patterns. Okay, starch ends up producing these spirals. That's a terrible looking spiral, but yeah. Right. And then whereas cellulose makes these kind of relatively linear zigzag sort of patterns. Okay, um, so all down to the difference between alpha and beta. All right. That finishes things up. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.